what's going on guys all right so i do apologize about the noise it's mad busy in here it's summertime and it's uh, car season of course right so i want to talk about what i'm going to do here as far as the rear bumper goes on the subaru sti i'm going to wrap this for you right now uh there is a couple of fairings on the side here all I've done is mask them off. I'll move the camera back a little bit so you can see, but you can kind of see on that bottom corner right there that I've masked it off. I also have run knifeless tape all the way across this diffuser. What you want to do when you're running that knifeless tape on this diffuser is overlap the black section because it's better that the color overlaps the black a little bit as opposed to be the other way around where we might run short and show white. So overlap the black section, I just run the knife is tape right on the very edge. That gives me about one eighth of an inch overlap. Not even an eighth, a sixteenth, sorry. Which is just enough. Uh, so this bumper has quite a few imperfections in it. I mean, it's got some, something bumped into something there, someone bumped into it a little bit right there. Again, it's not perfect. These are daily driven cars. They're not going to be perfect. On top of that, there is quite a bit of, uh, Looks like brake dust burned into the paint. There's like they're like small, rusted-looking specks. Obviously, it can't rust. It's plastic, so it's not rust. But it comes from the brake caliper, so it kind of burns itself into the clear coat. Now it is slightly rough, but I have cleaned it very well. Uh, there's also a nice little mark right there. Anyways, uh, what I've done here is I've removed the seal, or I've just lifted it off and pulled it back a little bit, so that way we, we can get to this edge a little bit easier. We do this whole bumper in one piece. It's not that complicated. And so we're gonna to get to it right now. So I've got my piece of vinyl already cut. I'm just gonna bring it around for you. Awesome. Just dropped it. Luckily the backing paper is still on it up part of it all right let's do this typically you don't want to drop your vinyl you might pick up some dirt and stuff like that it was on the very very end again there's going to be um, there's like fender flares on this thing so I'm not too concerned about the very end of it in order to make your life easier you can actually have this rolled up and it'll make life a little bit easier and then just unroll it as you as you move across the bumper i'm excited to see this because it's gonna really gonna start to complete the look of the car i'm gonna come up a little bit obviously we're getting a good position here oh yeah and on top of that what i've done is i've also um let's move that back a little bit there you go so what i've done is i've pulled the bumper out slightly right here you can see that see that right there that way we can access the top edge really nicely i had a feeling there were no screws in it so uh simply because they probably cut them out by adding in the uh, fender flares so again checking my alignment making sure everything's good and we're solid all right heat guns ready again typically you want to go with two magnets on each side i'm just going to go with one right now And we want to draw the film just past the corner. And then we're going to plop it back down. Color we're using is Vivid Gloss Nardo Gray. You might think that it has a blue tinge to it. That's mostly due to the fluorescent lighting inside the shop. So it's not necessarily because the film actually has a bluish tinge to it. It might have a little bit. I don't know. I've seen it outside. It doesn't really quite look as blue in the daylight. So I don't know what to say. Anyways, let's get that out of the way. I'm gonna do a little Instagram video right now, so just bear with me for one moment. I've got uh, Rolls Gold Chrome right there. I've got Johnson working on a brand new Mercedes E63, and he's wrapping that in CYS metal, what is it, pearl metal yellow. So I'm just going to do a little video here. All right. 
So what we're gonna do here is obviously glass it out a little bit. It needs to be straighter than this. As far as positioning goes, we're good. I'm gonna slap my magnets down on the other side and get to it. So we're just gonna find a good line here. Box in the way. Find a good line and I don't have to pull too hard. What I'm looking to do is find that nice flat part and just balance the film, okay? That's, what, that's basically what it is, balancing the film. You can see that I lifted it back a couple of times just so I could balance this and get it as flat as possible right off the bat. Right? We don't want to have to be dealing with so many wrinkles and stuff in this area right here. It's a very flat section. So, same deal on this side, right? Most people struggle with this, and it's all, it's all it is is positioning. It's nothing else other than positioning. It's not so much even pulling across. I am pulling a little bit, but it's how, it's where your left arm are and your right arm are. That's all it is. I'm pulling a little bit just so I can simply get a bit of contour across. I don't need a lot. Beautiful. All right, so we have a great place to start. Let's flatten it out a little bit up here. And now we're gonna, there's that mark I was talking about earlier. Now we're gonna stretch the film across, okay? I'll put the camera more straight on so you guys can see better. Actually, maybe I'll leave it here and then move it over afterwards. This might help you. Heat gun. So we have a taper in at the top, not so much on the bottom. So our focus is more across the top. And we want to pull it back until we've got it looking pretty smooth, all right? We don't want to try and heat and pull all kinds of wrinkles. We want to make sure that we're only heating a smooth part of the film. And when I pull, I'm gonna grab, and a lot of this is all technique, right? It's grabbing and kind of pulling outwards, like this, top to bottom. So we're pulling vertically and pulling horizontally. Can't forget about heating the top because we need it all to flow, all right? So look where I put my right hand, okay? I'm gonna put it back a bit. Not, not so far, sorry, back a bit more towards the center of the bumper, not so far back towards me. Simply because it's gonna be challenging if we put our hand all the way back to get that, that pull down. That's what we really want. So I have a huge piece here, I probably could have done with a little bit less. Pulling the film up, and we're gonna get just right before the corner here. Now we need to we need a little more emphasis right here. Okay. Emphasis in pulling in all directions. So wow, I have that up. I'm just gonna. Squeegee that down, it's gonna make life a little bit simpler, less to worry about. And that's kind of my, this is my starting point right here. So if you want to, it also helps to elevate the bumper. By elevating the bumper, it'll give you a better line of sight basically. So again, what I'm gonna do, we're gonna heat and chase some of these wrinkles out with the heat. And then we're gonna go probably for one of the last pulls here. And 
Now I want to eliminate all these. I use my finger. There's quite a few still at the top there, as you can see. So what I need to do is I'm going to pull the film back a bit. Just so I can elevate the film slightly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat it and let it shrink down. Bang, boom, bang, whatever. Cool. So as far as all this goes, we're around, we're around the difficult part. What's, what happened here? Oh, I got caught exactly where I thought I would get caught, right on this diffuser piece. No big deal. I'm going to, oh man, I got a little wrinkle right there. I gotta fix that up, I don't like that. can't get it I'll just pull the whole piece back and redo it yeah. there we go and letting it shrink down Okay, now I'm going to work here. Okay. Get it out. One more. Oh, right. There we go. Checking it out. So I can put a relief cut here if I want to. It might, it might help. I'm not really sure. Let's do it. I don't want to cut on the diffuser, so I'm going to cut above. Well, the, on the floating vinyl. And then I'm going to make this into a little circle. circle then when we're doing bumpers alone the tricky part is obviously keeping it as flat as possible so when I train I train a lot of people and, and they struggle mostly with keeping the film flat yeah? and not fighting with so many wrinkles as you notice, I'm not really squeegeeing over that many wrinkles. I keep the film as flat as possible. Okay. So now I'm gonna work my way back. I'm gonna run my squeegee right through the middle here. This is going to be super easy. Finish off. Cut off all this excess. I don't need it. Okay. Again, all this excess up here. I don't need it. Okay. This allows me to get a little bit closer just to pop the film up and get that going. All right. So I'm going to shrink this down, there we go, Just shrink all that down, and let's get over the top, shrink it down again, it's all about heat shrinking, alright, let's get in here. Right now, I just gotta finish up the bottom bit here. Got one wrinkle there, it's gonna heat it out. Perfect. So, I have 
literally no tension here. I'm just heating it up so I can keep the film soft and pliable as I get near the bottom. So the issue with this little splitter thing on the bottom here is it gets in the way and it gets the vinyl tends to want to bunch up a little bit as we get closer and closer to it because the vinyl is actually hitting it, right? So the trick is to push down in a way where we're not getting it happening. So we're down to the bottom. Let's finish up around here. Get it all tucked in underneath. Excellent. Other side now, okay? Two seconds. There we go. All right, let's go hit up the other side. Let's do it. a better perspective here. Let's angle it down a little bit and there we go. Alright. So again our emphasis is going to be more so right at this bend but we do need to stretch it a little bit first and get things going here. So the vinyl, camera's bitten by the way, move it back a bit. The vinyl tends to want to stick to itself a little bit better than it sticks to the paint. I'm not sure, that's just kind of a characteristic of Vivid and a lot of their films. It's actually great for like chrome and stuff because chrome you have to use seams a little bit more and um, it's you know that it's pretty secure. I'm just going to do a little bit here because I didn't like how I was initially set up on the other side the first time, so I'm just setting myself up a little bit better this time. Cool. I'm okay with this. What I wanted to do is lock this in up here so it doesn't drop down this time. And now we've got it stretched across a little bit so it should lock in really nicely, which it just did. And bring this down a little bit. Got to grab some of this, get it out. And there's kind of our starting line right here, okay? So we're gonna start right about there. This might take a second try after this try now. So that was the initial one, it's just something I did to set myself up. And then gonna do it. This is my worst side. One side is always easier than the other, okay? So this is not my best side because my left hand ends up being lower and I, I like it when my right hand's on the bottom because it's more dominant. I'm right-handed. You'll see me pretty much pulling in a very similar fashion where I'll reach a little bit further ahead and more towards the center of the bumper. All I'm trying to do is make the film soft and pliable. Okay? So again, I reach a little bit further ahead 
and I lean, okay? When I lean, I don't have to use so much muscle. As I'm there, I'll fix myself up. This is kind of a bummer, because I wish I got a little bit further than that. No big deal. Let's finish it off up here, though. to about here just I don't even really want to come to the kind of this edge I don't want to come past if I don't have to but we'll see what happens when I pull the vinyl back yeah it's gonna come back a bit more than I want it to so be it up a little bit there. There. Something like that. When we're heating, never forget about the bottom. The bottom's going to tend to cool a little bit faster than the top. Let's do this. Oh, I forgot to turn the heat gun off. Some good pull right across. Some serious pull right across. I'm gonna put a magnet there so that way when I'm pulling up here, I don't pull up the whole thing and this whole thing comes back. I want it to stay exactly where it is. So all I'm gonna do now is while I have it up, just hold it, heat it, and let all that do its thing. Let it all shrink in. Maybe to bring it back a little bit past here. Again, watch. It's just pulling it, and I'm not even pulling it. Right? We do have to keep it smooth during this process when we're letting it shrink in. But again, that's just doing it itself. As far as the shrinking part and the pulling in, we just want to keep it smooth. Okay, so, get rid of that. I can... Oh, let's just do this. So I want a straight line right through here. This way I can work top and bottom separate. I'm going to trim off some excess film. All our wrinkles are running across, more or less. This one isn't, it's a little bit. I, all I have to do is pull this way. So I'm gonna put a magnet there. See, so what happens when you don't get your hands close enough, it's harder to get to the wrinkles that are running across. So I'm gonna heat this down and let it shrink, as it will, All right? Fantastic. Let's do the bottom. We're almost on this bumper, guys. It's gonna be done in like another 15 minutes. lay down here it's a little bit easier and I'm gonna glass this down okay. so I want to pull this in the opposite direction I'm gonna heat it and shrink it I'm not happy with how it looks right there perfect all the wrinkles are gone start more there in the recess and then 
work our way into the large area. Now I'm going to do a relief cut right here as I did before. The difference that the relief cut makes is unreal guys, like you, you have to do these things. Okay, let's get the heat going, let's get it shrinking in. Now all I want to do is, I want to try and keep it flat, I want to try and keep it flat while I shrink it in. It's hard. It's hard because we have the splitter here, whatever you want to call that shark tail thing. I just call it a splitter. Perfect. Let's do this. I need to even this out so I always sweep in like a semicircle, okay? See how that I do that? We don't want to get ahead of ourselves, so I'm gonna keep that line a little bit better. So I'm running into resistance right here. I need this to come down further. I'm always trying to keep everything in line. Look, if this, if this piece wasn't here right now, I mean, I probably could have taken it off. I would have, I would have been done already. So I'm just gonna put a little tension on it to keep it flat. Oh, got some wrinkles there. See how I, fast I hit it with heat? It's really, as soon as the vinyl reacts, I'm done with the heat. Just sitting there soaking the entire panel with a ton of heat. It's all about moderation, okay? A lot of a lot of vinyl wrapping cars is finding the moderate point in what works. What time are we at? 29. I'm just gonna start the video over. I just have to start the video because we're going to run out of time at 30 minutes. Don't want it cutting out. So I'm going to put a relief cut right there. And let's get this around. Got a small wrinkle there. There we go. When we're squeegeeing, we have to keep it flat, okay? Always keeping the vinyl flat. If you squeegee over wrinkles, it usually leads to more wrinkles. So just keep that in mind. But again, it's all about reading the film. It's a huge pain to get to. I need to overlap the knife with tape. I'm almost there. Got it. And let's just fix this up right here. Okay. All right, let's overlap the knife this tape. Mm. 
not stretching into this recess. I'm laying into it. Here's where the damage was. So was it? Yeah, it's right here. See how that pulled in? I wanted it to do that. See the knifeless. Alright, it's time to bust out the wrap stick flex. Because we need it. It's just good for getting into this little area right here. Excellent. Cut some of this vinyl out of the way. It's way too bunched up. I didn't want to cut through the knifeless tape. This thing is this thing is awesome for working fine details. Can't tell you how much I use it. I use it all the time. Alright, so I'm just gonna move the camera back to its original spot in the beginning. tuck in here all the way across super easy all I'm doing is lifting from the bottom overlapping the knifeless be certain we have no air in here it'll, throw, it'll screw up your knifeless cut okay so make sure that that's nice and flush all the way through Again, we're gonna work a bit over here. I need it to shrink in a little bit. It's the easier side for me because I'm right-handed. So my, I'm able to get in here a little bit better with my right hand. This feels more comfortable. Boom, shrinking in, it's excellent, it's what I want. Burning my extension cord it happens. Making sure that we're thoroughly overlapping the knifeless tape. comfortable to pull the knifeless tape in a minute. I see a little air right there. Let's get it. There. All 
Alright guys, let's do it. So I stuck it to the bottom here. Somewhere. There we go. So I stuck it to the bottom. Now we're gonna go for the fun stuff. Oh, string broke. Friggin' red string. Design line is not good. Don't use it. Ah, oh, broke twice. Shit. Let's go to the other side. What's wrong with this? Broke again. And again. My god. It's the weakest piece of string I've ever seen. Almost. I had to pull the string out first. Okay, I think I should get it here. Let's hope so. Me like six tries there, five or six tries. Check it out. Super clean cut. Nice, huh? Perfect. So I need to get the rest of the knifeless tape out of there. So one piece, I got one more piece still. If I can get it, if it didn't break so many times. Let's get the last piece out. So short, there we go. So yes, I don't recommend using design line. I think there's like a special tool you can get to break it. Yellow Tools makes one, I know that, but I'm not sure how it works with the design line. Do the rest of the trimming. That piece out of the way. I'm gonna lay that in there. And then we're just gonna trim across the bottom here. because I don't have to really worry about full coverage, or do I? No, we do have a small spot here that I still have to go into. I've trimmed off most of the fender, but not all of it. Let's wrap it in a little bit. So we got that white covered completely. I know with the fender flare on, you'll still be able to see 
this little back back piece of the bumper. are so massive I can't even like they literally fit like an inch and a half between the bumper it's crazy all right let's just get to the fun stuff and do the top piece here so we really don't need all this so just trim out a heck of a lot of it not cut myself there we go It's a little bit better to work with. Glove right here. And we're just gonna work the film in, okay? We're gonna start with the always in here. Take my stretch from over here and start laying in, okay? Stretch from over here, pushing in the tension from over here. So I'm gonna need a squeegee right here. Just had to heat it to keep the wrinkles away. Now I wanna keep it, I wanna keep it flowing a little bit so I don't wanna get too far ahead of myself. Let's put it this way, if I was to do this with 3M, I would be getting a bazillion glue lines in this area. But because we got Vivid, we're not getting the really skinny glue lines compared to 3M would have so, like just really pronounced and distinguishable glue lines that just don't look good. So, I got a little mark there from the buffer from the squeegee. It's just the uh, adhesive a little bit. I can take it off afterwards. So you'll notice that it's a little bit dirty looking. Let's do the other side. itself in which is awesome. You can see that I'm not heating where my fingers are, right? So what I was just doing there is a really clear example of how I heat over here but yet I can stretch in here.
So this recess should literally have next to no tension in it. Now we can go get all this. See, I want to keep things flowing, guys. It's super important to always do this. that back edge trying to go above and beyond here so I'm gonna try to make this next bend right here show off work though. I like doing stuff like this, this, these kind of parts. Bumpers are probably like my favorite part of the car to wrap. I actually hate doing mirrors, <laughs> door handles. I hate doing small things. best here. It's a really crazy bend right here. The soft squeegee's not doing it for me, so let's move into the more rigid one. Bumpers are like my favorite. Particularly like the rear bumpers, I don't know why. Just say I'm kind of a rear end guy. Look how mint that looks, that looks it's awesome. I'll clean up this adhesive afterwards, the adhesive marks from the squeegee itself or my glove, I'm not sure where it's coming from. Got a couple of air bubbles. So if we heat and poke air bubbles, we can actually just kind of pop them out. I actually have a special tool for that, if it has it. Soften the film up. Since it's the other way now, I have to <coughs> um, improvise a little bit.
looks pretty awesome. So, slap this back on. What time are we at? Almost an hour. I don't even really have to post seed that. I'm not concerned about it. Got some pretty good access. It's my knife. Oh, right here. Got some pretty good access to the edge, so let's trim it up. On the back side. Look, blades floating, blades floating, blades floating. Beautiful. Just gotta clean up the gunk. It's the gunk from uh, that that weather stripping that I got there that I took off. Just figured it out why I had so much dirt on my glove. What I'm going to do right here is a little cut and fold. So cut. Fold right over that corner. That goes right under the head, under the tail light so we don't even see it. And as far in as I want to go is about here. That's it. I'm going to finish up this little bit right here. And then I'll let you guys have a look at it. And I'll just turn up the other side. And I'm going to call it a day as far as this bumper goes. But I'll show you this and then I'm going to end the video. Got a wrinkle on the edge there. Beep, beep. extra behind if we want to. Perfect. Alright. Let's check it out guys. We got four minutes before an hour is up. I've got about five, ten minutes left. Alright, so we can see we got nice clean all the way through. This is all just a bunch of like I guess that grease and stuff from not grease, uh adhesive from that seal. I can clean it off with a little adhesive remover. We can check it out right in there. It's all one piece, right? How complicated this little section is, right? So, cool. Cool. All right, guys. If you enjoyed the video of the rear bumper ramp on the Subaru STI, give it a thumbs up. If you guys want to see the front bumper, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching. Take care.